basically people have to be self-reliant and that's one of the things that has been we've been very strong um, all along in the Bismarck Rama group is to try and basically uh, get people to be self-reliant I really want to get the message across throughout the country to help the people to see the importance of their land and don't, I don't want them to sell their land out. Yeah, I know this is only, the, this is only our hope and the, the, our mother and everything, our life. So that's the foundation and I want people to hold on their land. Mm. We came in here with the focus of working with the people. The project was had a different objective, the UN the funders and all that, planners, they were looking at conservation. Our focus was the people. Uh, because in Papua New Guinea, land is owned by the people. And how can we talk about conservation and do all that awareness without due consideration for the people? You know, we should not basically play the same game as what the loggers are doing by basically paying up people, people and um, going in there heavy-handed with trucks and uh, all sorts of stuff there which raises expectations in the field. You know, um, like if, if we have a foreigner in the, in the team which is going out into the community, you know, the first, the first picture that um, the people in the village will get is that um, they'll expect something from outside. Like, or they bring in, bring in new development or something like that. Whereas when we have our own local people going into the community, I, I don't think um, it raises the expectations. BRG as an indigenous organization, he tries to build, uh, build its own uh, structures and platform on, on, on traditional values and systems and flexibility and our own system. So, we don't want to kind of override those you know, rich uh, indigenous practice. They fiercely wanted to make sure that they did things differently because they had seen some experience with a lot of NGOs in the country and some of our people had government experiences. <clears throat> so they wanted to do something differently and they wanted to try to make the organization as Melanesian as possible, whatever that means. And uh, so they proceeded on that road. That was interesting for me because um, as I said, I'm a Western thinker, I'm an outsider. Um, but it's been interesting to watch these influences because as they try to keep the organization Melanesian, um, they also adopt outside thinking. You, know, you can't help it in this, in this globalized world. Huh? So Bismarck Ramu took a turn in there. They decided to do it, uh, do it completely different from the arcade concept that they were doing in the past you know because conservation is not basically the the number one problem people face the most pressing issue people face people they have said other things that they are faced up with they have uh, health problems which they need to attend they have uh, education problems the community identified uh, identified conservation as, as as a third major issue in the village in the village and the first two issues which they identified were education and health. They decided to address the issue on uh, education, on education first. So as a result of that, at present in that community, um, they have a community school. They have a, uh, really it's not a community school but it's, a, it's an elementary school now in the community. They have it in place already and that's on education. On health, they 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 uh, hospital, they had post set up, and they have a health worker in the in the community too. So that is already exist, existing in the community at present. Okay, those were the the two issues which the community identified apart from conservation. They are immediately across from where a company has been operating, and they w didn't want uh, logging on their land. The land is adjoining the logged out area. They didn't want similar happening on the land, so they asked us to assist them to conserve the land and forest. And for two years, our community organizers have been working with them. And then 
our contribution team came in, went in. Which basically, it turned out really, we achieved our objective by conserving, by establishing two wildlife management areas with the people, um, and a conservation, uh, yeah, I think it's two wildlife management areas that we, um, where, where were they? That's the Foroko Wildlife Management Area and Shepu Wildlife Manage Management Area. To me, I think the people were very happy and uh, very, why I say that is because the way, the way BRG facilitated those arrangements were, I mean, they totally owned, especially, especially the wildlife management areas which we, we set up, help them, assist them set up in Foroko and Sepu. The people, the people say now that it's, it's our WME, yeah? so they, they seem to own the WME. It's uh, in their own uh, standard and terms. It's like uh, naturally there is there are taboo areas that are strictly sacred, sacred sites, which is out of bounds for people to go in. So those are like uh, in the language of some conservation people who are here. They are like wildlife banks. Oh yeah, um, I think our people trusted the women more than the men. I mean, they trusted the women to take care of the money when they went out for patrol, so while they were still here, and um, not so much the men. I think that the women are wise, they're wise in them spending the money, mm -hmm. and not men, that's how we see it here. We, education team, actually we talk about the environment in general and then also touch down the main baseline of our history, of the PNG history culture, that we pretty much start with that first. And then we talk about other issues like locking and mining and stuff like that to put in place together for them to understand. You know, when we talk about the history, they, uh, some of them just came out and talk about their own little the stories, the legends that they've been told. Mm. And it was interesting to know that, and they, they, they're kind of um, happy that this is good. If we can keep our, our, our uh, traditions, legends going on, mm. we can pass it to our next generation. Mm. And as I mean, the whole team, we were kind of excited. And said, boy, that is, this is great to work with this kind of kids. Yeah. And you will feel that no matter how old you are, but you still be young. And that's one of the reasons that I really ought, always, always want to work with the kids. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I mean, still want to do that for maybe some, sometime, quite sometime, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> Being present for the people when they come in with problems, uh, providing psychological support, moral support, listening to them, that's very important. Nobody listens to the people. So that's what the two of us campaigners are here for. The issues that we brought up, they just came into uh, those issues and they started uh, I mean, assisting us on the issues. All the decisions that, uh, that come out for the campaigns and all these are, are usually made by us. We do the, I mean, we make the decisions and uh, they just go by our decisions. Uh, we come up with uh, our story about the pollution of uh, RD and the problems we are facing and they just settled down and heard our story and they gave us the idea to follow which path to follow and we go we follow these ideas and we went through this battle mm. and now we we are okay we are doing fine now the biggest thing that the BRG um, did was empower these guys, I mean three people were going to stand on behalf of a whole community of Kananams and do something and they were not going to be able to achieve it on their own and I think that Bismarck Ramu group 
gave them that strength to come and talk to even the lawyers plus um, whoever they were willing to talk to about the issues that they've been facing. And nobody listened to the Kananams for a long while. I think the Biology Group was very you know, vocal about it and it was also their help that made the Kananams stand up and talk. Well, basically, that's where our strength is. Uh, our strength is on the ground. Uh, to basically help organize local communities and that's where we, we have our strength. Other charity organizations are doing their bit on the other hand, but then there's always this gap created between uh, particularly this, the last maybe five, ten years where the government services has not actually reached the rural community. Um, sure, you see someone, you see a little kid with a big uh, bell there and it's malnourished, or you see the children lacking food, you want to help, you, you want to do what you can. But I think rather than just giving something, one must step back and say, okay, how are we going to approach this thing? I'm not saying leave that little child hungry, but let's, yeah, we begin by feeding them, let's take them through a process because if we continue to give them food and give them food, they become dependent. And that's what's happened here. There's a colonization of the mind that Bismarck Rama is trying to break down, saying you, you can do it. You can do this stuff. Huh. Doesn't mean we don't need, doesn't mean we're trying to cut ourselves off from the outsiders. It means start believing in yourself. And when you start believing in yourself, you can engage that outside world on a much more equal basis. That's, I guess, BRG call them, calls themselves a, a process-oriented organization, though they may be specifically referring to the community development process. Uh, the rest not I come to understand why they, they do that is maybe within PNG context where Papua New Guineans, we, are, we build relationships, we value people, we value people's time. Um, we didn't talk about all the tangible things that would happen after. The relationship building is the best part of any, any form of positive you know, outcome of any relationship. And uh, I think BRG captured that very well. People out there, they're rural, they're isolated, they expect a government official or someone from the church to go in and provide all the things they need. And they will never get it. And particularly this time, the government will not do anything productive for them. So we believe for BRGs, that's the key and essential part of, most important part of any process of community or uh, development work is to get people to realize that you know, they have the answers within themselves where they can explore. And it only requires a neutral person to be, to be present with them and be able to provide that extra person so then people feel that empowerment and move on.